The Kremlin fears the public's reaction to Ukraine strikes deep into Russia. This issue is a sensitive one for Vladimir Putin's inner circle. According to RBC Ukraine's sources, a decision on strikes deep into Russia will still be made and this greatly irritates the Russians. In addition to addressing purely military and logistical objectives, such as significantly reducing the aggressor's military potential, these strikes could also provoke discontent among the Russian population. Our intelligence is confident that such attacks on Russia can shake up their population and this will force the Kremlin Towers to think about something and come up with some solutions. Of course, we don't know what is in the minds of the Russians, but the hysteria on the other side shows that we have probably touched on a painful topic for them, says one of the interlocutors. According to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Western approval for long-range strikes would reduce the intensity of Russia's attacks on Ukraine. Moreover, Mikhailo Podolyak, an advisor to the head of the office of the president, commented on the strike on a depot in Toropets, Tver region, in an interview with the RBC Ukraine. He clarified that permission to strike deep into Russia would significantly increase the number of such attacks. While waiting for a green light from Western countries to use their long-range weapons to strike targets deep inside Russia, Ukraine is relying on domestically produced drones which are considerably cheaper than missiles and no less effective. In recent months, Ukraine has increased the number of strikes using homemade drones against Russian critical infrastructure essential to powering Russia's war machine. Faced with attacks using dozens of drones at once, the Russian air defense proved to be overstretched and not always effective. Despite Russia's extensive air defense capabilities, there are limitations to protecting all targets effectively. Matthias Eken, a defense and security expert at RAND Europe, told the Kyiv Independent, the objective is to demonstrate to the Russian populace that the state's defense capabilities are insufficient, highlighting vulnerabilities within Russia, Eken added. Russian troops are being massively deployed to Pokrovsk, a logistics base for Ukrainian forces and an important transportation hub. Fierce fighting has been ongoing in this area for months. As The Guardian reports, Ukrainian drones, including attack drones, are circling in flocks over the heads of the occupiers. Journalists witnessed one of the kamikaze drones attacking Russians at a cemetery in the destroyed village of Mykhailivka. One Russian survived but was wounded in the left leg. The occupier tried to provide himself with first aid, but his chances of survival are minimal. He will definitely die. The enemy is not worried about evacuating the wounded, said Ukrainian Major Alexander Fanage. Late last month, the occupier seized a mine near Mykhailivka. Their mini-advance was part of a larger Russian offensive that began with the capture of Avdiivka. Its goal? To expand a narrow salient into Ukrainian territory and seize the town of Pokrovsk. Pokrovsk is a logistics base and the main transport hub of the Ukrainian armed forces. Numerous road and rail lines intersect here. Russian troops are already approaching the city. Last week, enemy aircraft destroyed bridges in and around the city, setting the stage for a future frontal attack. The Ukrainians are building an alternative dirt route towards Mirnorad. The Russians are pressing from two sides. They occupied the town of Novogradovka, population 18,000 last week, seemingly without much fighting. Russian troops are also advancing from the southeast and from Ukrainsk. A patch of forest and a railroad track away from Mykhailivka is the Ukrainian-controlled town of Selidov. The Kremlin's creeping progress has a significant human cost. Fanage, the artillery commander of the National Guard's 15th Brigade, showed journalists the front in detail. Zooming in on a drone image, he saw six dead Russians. Another soldier, bloated and headless, lay a few meters away. This village is a cemetery for them, said the Major. There were about 10 more bodies in the anti-tank ditch. Around them were the paraphernalia of war, a machine gun, helmets, provisions. In the last two weeks, Russia's momentum has almost stopped. We have slowed their advance. They are moving forward, but with less potential. Fanage said, the Russians have changed tactics. Today, they rarely use armored vehicles on a drone-infested battlefield. Instead, small groups of 10 to 15 soldiers sneak forward on foot, day and night, using a variety of routes. If they are not noticed, they try to infiltrate Ukrainian lines by meeting up in larger groups. 
With the Russians, it's a matter of quantity, not quality. We see so many meat attacks, Fanagay said. The battle for Pokrovsk is likely to be the culmination of Moscow's military campaign this year. Vladimir Putin's political and strategic goal is to seize the entire Donetsk region as well as three other Ukrainian regions he annexed in 2022. If the occupiers take the city, they will be a few minutes' drive from the administrative borders of the region and the road to the Dnieper. From Pokrovsk, they could cut the chain of Ukrainian garrison towns to the north, Konstantinovka, Druzkovka, Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. Fanagay said he was optimistic that Ukraine would win the war despite the size of its rival. We have three years of war. If we get enough weapons, victory is absolutely possible, Fanagay said, noting that Putin is lying about nuclear war.